What's going on guys, the Beatdown, I'm back with more Marvel Avengers Alliance, welcome to a brand new episode of Avengers Assemble, where I take a look at a brand new character and tell you if they're worth getting worth passing. He might have sucked before, but now he's back, and deadlier than ever. We're having a look at, of course, tis nothing but a flesh wound, the Black Knight. Although not the first to hold this title. Nathan Garrett, the previous villainous Black Knight, begged his nephew Dan to take up the name and restore its legacy. As one of the greatest swordsmen on Earth, Dan Whiteman has more than kept his promise. With the all-cleaving ebony blade and psyche-disturbing sword of light, the Black Knight is equipped to handle any challenge. Anyways, that's all fun and whatnot, let's get down to stats. So, the Black Knight has high health and stamina and defense with four blocks each. Medium attack with three blocks with three block and low accuracy and evasion, which is very awkward for a or very weird for a tactician. He gets chivalrous duty, protects allies from single target or area attacks. Chance to parry and absorb an attack, then perform a counterattack, increasing the damage and accuracy of the next ebony blade. Cursed Blade is replaced with Shield of the Night. Pentecostal Oath grants all allies magic warding. By the way, in Chivalrous Duty, he uh, counters with uh, Shield of the Night, in case you were curious. Which I'll get to eventually. So, Ebony Blade is a one enemy melee slashing ability that ignores defense and applies broken vows. It removes Chivalrous Duty and applies bleeding. In place of Chivalrous Duty, he gets Blood Curse. Chance to perform a follow-up attack when an ally attacks a bleeding target. Chance to counter when a bleeding enemy attacks an ally. Allies slashing attacks apply bleeding. Shield of the Knight is replaced with Curse Blade. Atonement is a self-buff. It removes uh, Atonement removes cur Blood Curse and reapplies Chivalrous Duty. We've already gone over what that does. Shield of the Knight is a one enemy melee attack that has hemorrhaging attack, causes all applications of bleeding to trigger, applies weak point, and he gets covered, taking 50% damage from all attacks. And finally, Valnior is an all enemy melee summon attack with a one round cooldown. It applies bleeding, intimidated, and cornered. Now for Blood Court, Blood Curse, of course, his level 6 is changed to Cursed Blood, a one enemy slashing melee. That applies deadly crits, ethereal strike, exploits, bleeds, ignore defense. So honestly, he can be good for any bleeding team, whether he's attacking or defending. Uh, defending, of course, Shield of the Night uh, applies hemorrhaging attacks that can cause extra damage. Valnor is always a good uh, starting off thing to hit everyone with bleeding, intimidated, and cornered. But if you feel like taking the fast approach, an ebony blade will cause all allies slashing attacks to get extra bleeding. Yes, if an attack already does bleeding, it will just add a second of stack to it. And Cursed Blade exploits bleeding for dangerous damage. Also, it's got Ethereal Strike, so it ignores avoidance and incorporal effects. That means anything like phased or... Uh, phased... I can't think of any other incorporal effect that anyone has. But anything like that, he can cut through it. So, Black Knight is definitely a very good character with only uh, for 90 command points. Uh, either a defender or attacker. Uh, I would certainly recommend him, as I've used him a fair bit. I need to use him a bit more, but I always forget. Anyways, that'll be it for now, so until next time, guys, I will catch you all later. Asta.